Our lessons have taken us to the top of the memory hierarchy. We have examined long-term storage, main memory, cache, and at the top, now we're talking about registers. And we talked in the last lesson about the different kinds of registers. There were data registers, ones that hold values that we were performing operations on. There were flags. We'll talk about those in a, in a future lesson. And then there was addresses. So, some of our registers hold addresses, and there are a couple of very important address registers in our system. One of them we talked about in the last lesson was the instruction pointer. It was the one that showed us exactly which instruction is to be executed next. And it gave us control when we were doing things like loops or conditional branches and so forth that, that, uh, that helped us jump through our code. The next one we're going to talk about is just as important. And it actually bridges a gap between memory. Well, that's what addresses are pointing to, right? They're pointing to memory. But we have another use for bridging that gap between the registers and memory. And this is talking about something called the stack. Now, what is a stack? Well, many years ago, my son, when he was about three or so. We were at a buffet, and if you know about the buffets at the end of that long table of food, you have usually these columns of plates, these plates that are kind of nestled down in these holes inside of the buffet. And uh, he walked past them and took his hand and put it on the top plate and then shoved it down. Surprised me. All those plates shot down and then they shot back up and I got an opportunity to see well pretty close to the bottom plate now I thought it was hilarious my wife didn't think it was quite as funny but the key behind that story is that it identifies something called a last in first out storage method right okay so the last plate that was put on that stack the top plate what's the first plate you pull off the top plate. So the last plate on is the first one out. Lord knows if that bottom plate's ever going to see the light of day. But when it comes to memory, we use a last in first out. It's, it's a reserved portion of memory and it's reserved by the operating system. And in fact, what's interesting about this is that sometimes if we have multiple applications running on a system, you know, concurrently, uh, multitasking, then the operating system more than likely is going to reserve a different portion of memory as the stack for each application. So this is a portion of memory that's being reserved. And the way it works is this last in, first out, or LIFO, so it's a reserved portion of memory for temporary storage. of and it's typically register values so usually what you're doing is you're taking you've got registers so and, and you know the data registers or maybe even the flag registers or the address registers what i want to do is temporarily store them somewhere safely so that so that after doing some manipulations i can go back to an original state so typically it's storage of registers now how do we access this? Well, think back about those plates. Think about the plates that are being used at that buffet. What is the top plate? That's just by its position. But we need some way of referring to that top plate with the processor, and we do it with an address register called the stack pointer. All right. Now, there are a number of ways for a stack pointer to work. So, for example, you know, whenever you're physically adding plates, well, it's growing up, right? Well, when you're talking about a stack and the growth of a stack, so when we're adding values to the stack, there are actually two options for it to grow. It could, it could ascend um, or increment through addresses and memory, so we could have increment so every time I add a register value to my stack, I get to a higher address. I keep adding to the address. Or it could grow by decrementing. 
through the addresses. So every time I put a new memory, in, a new a put, a put a new value from a register onto the stack, it's actually decrementing, going to lower addresses in memory. Each one, just as I mean, the processor's stuck in its way of doing it, but it's it's important to understand that you could be incrementing through memory or decrementing through memory as you're adding things to the stack. The other thing about the stack pointer, and, and once again, the stack pointer, it's just pointing, it's, it contains an address that's pointing to the stack. Whenever you put something onto the stack, the, the stack pointer could be pointing to the last item that was put onto the stack or the next place to put an item onto the stack. And that is basically saying, are we pre-incrementing or decrementing or are we post incrementing or decrementing. Now I realize this seems a little strange but the reason why I'm saying this is because the way I am going to present this means that just because I'm presenting it a certain way doesn't mean that you might not see slight variations in how the stack pointer works. What I'm going to do is I am going to increment, I'm going to, as I'm adding things to memory, I'm going to go to higher memory locations and I'm going to increment it after I store something. All right. And this way, my stack pointer for the example that I'm going to use, my stack pointer is always going to be putting, pointing to the next place to store a value, to store a register value. So once again, we're going to be going to higher memory locations every time we put another item onto our stack. And because we're post incrementing, it's going to be pointing to the next place to put something. That's not necessarily always the case, but there's, you know, the stack pointer is going to be some combination of this. So in our example, the stack pointer, and I'm going to abbreviate this with SP, it's going to point, it points to the next location to store a register value. And once again, this particular configuration is post increment for storing. Now, I know that not very many of you are going to become assembly language programmers. But it's kind of important to understand that there are just primarily two instructions that we are going to use to take advantage of the stack pointer to add or pull something off of the stack. And those two assembly language instructions are called push and pop. All right. And usually what we do, and, and if you recall from my introduction, brief introduction to assembly language, I said that um, we, what we have is an opcode and operands. Opcode is the code that represents the operation, and then the operands are the, the, the items that are being operated on. So usually what happens for a lot, of, a lot of these push and pop operations is what you do is your operand is just the register. All right. So real quick, push is going to store something to the stack. It's going to store a register to the stack. And in fact, some assembly language, uh, in, uh, some assembly languages allow you to have a list of registers there. So in that case, a push puts those registers onto the stack. A pop pops them off the stack. Now, think about, think about, maybe you have a favorite plate and you've put it on and then you know that four plates have been put on top of it, you know, put on top of that. Well, how do you get to that favorite plate? The one that you're interested in using? Well, you have to pop off four items before you can get to that favorite plate. This gives us an idea of the importance of maintaining the integrity of the stack pointer. It is possible for our stack pointer to kind of get offset because we weren't we weren't maintaining it properly. This is called corruption. So our stack pointer, corrupt, a corrupted stack pointer, basically means it ain't, it's not pointing where it should be. And when I pull off a plate expecting it to be a certain value or expecting it to be what I, what I the, the, op, the value that I'm expecting to operate on and it's different, 
there could be some problems. In the next lesson, we'll talk about exactly what problems could happen. So let me make some room, and then we'll, uh, then we'll do an example. All right, now for our example. How do you like that? Worked pretty well, didn't it? What I've got here is a memory. It's a blank memory right now. There's things in it, but we don't care about them. We're gonna store on top of it and stomp all over those values. Now, each memory location is eight bits wide, so we can store one byte in each one. Now, for my example, I'm right, I'm right now, I'm just gonna use three registers. I've got R0, R1, and R2. Each one of these, just for the sake of simplicity, so we don't need to worry about data structure alignment or Indianness. I also made each one of those registers a byte wide. And so R0 contains 1D, R1 contains 3A, each one byte, R2 contains 5-0, all right? Now, we also have this register that's a stack pointer. And the stack pointer right now contains four. This is an address. And, and I just picked four just, just because. I needed to pick something, right? So I've initialized, or well, the way we can look at it is that the operating system has assigned our stack to begin at address four in memory. So it is pointing to address four. Now, let's go ahead and do an instruction. Let's go ahead and push R0. Right? I need to store, and, and think of it this way. I've got only three registers, not very many, right? And I've got to do a lot of manipulation or a lot of, a lot of, of computation, and I need to free up those registers so I can do some computation, but I don't want to get rid of what was in them. That 1D, you know, that 1D, 3A, you know, 5, 0, those are important. I need to keep those, but right now they're in the way, so I need to store them somewhere. And so I do the push R0. And the push R0 takes the value that's in R0 and stores it into address 4. But now remember, what we've got is a post increment. So after storing R0 into address 4, now I need to modify R0, excuse me, modify the stack pointer. I have to also modify the stack pointer so it's pointing to the next memory location, the next place to store a value. And so I push. R1. Now when I push R1, it takes the value that is in R1, stores it to address location 5, and then increments the stack pointer to location 6, the next place to put a, uh, to put a value. And then we'll go ahead and put our last one, R2. And it takes the 5, 0 from R2, makes a copy. And this is important. It's just making copies to store to memory. It's not actually modifying what's in R0, R1, or R2. Those values are being left alone. So all it's doing is making a copy, copying R0, R1, R2 to memory. And so when we push R2, it, increment, it, it stores R2 at 6, which is where the stack pointer is pointing, and then increments the stack pointer so it's continuing, continuing to grow through memory. All right? And then, you know, we do all sorts of stuff. And, you know, so we've got a bunch of lines of code in here where we use R0, R1, and R2. We're modifying those values. Those values are getting changed, getting manipulated. And uh, it's, it's, corrupting is the wrong word because we were using those values, but now that we're done with our code, we want to restore what was in R0, R1, and R2. Well, what was in R0, R1, and R2? Well, look at the stack. The stack shows that our stack pointer, which is now pointing, and, it, and hopefully this code in here didn't modify the stack pointer so that it's now pointing to something other than 7, because we need it to point, we need it to have integrity to point at the correct uh, position. So, what was the last item put on? The last item put on was R2. So, we need to pop R2. And what popping R2 does is it decrements the stack pointer to 6, where R2 was stored, takes a copy, takes R2, it takes the value that was at that memory location, and restores it back to R2. And then we can do the same thing for R1. 
the stack pointer is now decremented to five, address five, the value that's in five is restored back into R1, and we've got R1 back the way it was. And then we do a pop R0. And popping R0 then decrements to four, our original value for the stack pointer, right? Takes the value that it's, the stack pointer is pointing to and puts it into R0. Now in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the uses. I mean, I've already really kind of talked about one use. It's a real nice place to temporarily store register values. In case we run out of registers and need to store them somewhere, it's really nice to be able to have a place to store those. The next lesson, though, we're actually going to talk about how stack pointers are used in order to support the execution of our code, specifically functions, and actually more importantly, nested functions, where within a function we call another function, within we call another function, within we call another function, and so forth. All right, see you then.